Good morning, everybody. My name is Joshua Boatman, and I am the Regional Technology Director for the Ohio Valley Region. And in today's uh, Regional Command Training, we are going to tackle the consumer applet, specifically talking about agent websites and what you can and cannot do and kind of how to get that thing off the ground and up and running. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, which is always my favorite thing to do. Because yeah, it works. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Looks like it worked this time. Phenomenal. All right. So the first thing I always kind of like to mention, if you have any questions during this class, please feel free to just unmute yourself, shout them out, raise your hand, um, throw them in the chat, whatever you feel most comfortable with, and we will uh, kind of take care of it from there. And then let me turn that sound off as well. Um, I put the sound on so I know when someone joins, but then you know what, I don't want to hear it when they leave because then it hurts my feelings. I'm like, oh, they left my class. I'm a very sensitive soul. Um, so today uh, we're going to jump into the consumer applet. So if you've been in a part of any of my classes, the first thing we're going to talk about is this red KW up here in the left hand corner. This will expand the list of all the applets. And in today's world, we are going to jump into the consumer applet. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to click on this. Now within the consumer applet, we basically manage a lot of things um, with our agent website. So being a part of Keller Williams, you are gifted a free agent website. Um, and the goal with that website is pretty phenomenal. You can create some custom pages. You can create um, you know, some custom listing pages, specifically what we're gonna talk about. Um, and then, but most importantly, with this agent website, you are linked into the KWLS, which basically means that you are hooked up with all the MLSs across the country. So your potential clients can log in and if they wanna look at a house in you know, California, they can do that. If they want to look at a house in Austin, Texas, they can do that. They can view all the different houses being listed across the country, which I think is a really huge value add. You know, a lot of local brokerages, they don't have that kind of ties and connections, right? They can only showcase houses within their area because of our relationship across the country and because of who we are, we can give you all the listings, which I think is really, really tremendous. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, hey, how do you go about setting up your agent website if you've never done it before. So we're gonna kind of walk through this process. And to do that, when we click on the consumer applet on the left-hand side, we're actually gonna go over here, we're gonna click site and app settings. And then once we're in site and app settings, we're gonna click the learn more with Kelly guides. So the first thing it's gonna ask you is gonna say, hey, what would you like to complete? We want to complete our agent site and we're going to click continue. Yes, I know we didn't save any changes. So what this is going to do, this is going to walk us through doing the initial setups that we need to do for our agent site to go live. So this is going to be us picking our subdomain, our style and our theme, adding some initial content and then moving on to some other things. So we're going to kind of try to run through this section relatively quickly, but this is a step by step that you can always go through multiple times. Site and app settings, learn more with Kelly Guide, agent site, and you can always run through this however many times you would like. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click get started. Now, the first thing is gonna pop up and say, hey, just as a compliance reminder, um, you need to make sure that based upon where you're located, what your local board and state laws are, that you're following all those rules, right? Keller Williams is not responsible, KWRI is not responsible for making sure that what you're doing with your website and branding falls within compliance that falls on you. So this is just you acknowledging that, right? And if for some reason you do not know where your DBA is, your specific market center DBA, you can click this link and this will take you to a page on KW Connect where you can scroll down a little bit to the market center logo section and type in your market center number and get it. So we can type in 335, for instance, which is a local market center to me. Um, this is Keller Williams hometown, hometown um, where I can download it. Just kind of want to point that out. Once we're good and you understand that compliance, right, uh, we're going to go ahead and acknowledge and continue. So the very first thing it asks us to do here on the right hand side is, you know what, let's pick our subdomain. And I just want to take a quick moment to talk about what a subdomain is. A domain name typically is the word 
to the left of the dot com, the dot net, the dot org, you know, uh, any of those, uh, you know, ending extensions on a website. So here you can see the actual domain name is kw.com. The subdomain name is going to be the word to the left of the main domain name, right? So here you can see currently right now my subdomain um, is joshuaboatman.kw.com. This would be my entire agent website. So a couple of things. This will always be, as of right now, your agent website, right? Um, you can purchase a, a different domain name. I could go out there and try to buy joshuaboatman.com, although I think Someone else already owns it. I wouldn't go there. I think it's pretty racy what's out there. Um, but um, I could then forward that domain name. But when I forward it, it's always going to look like it's joshuaboatman.kw.com. So a good rule of thumb, if you are going to purchase a domain name, try to see if you can secure the domain name um, that is the same as your subdomain name. And we can change that. We're going to walk into that. But to give you an idea, if I was the joshboatmangroup.com, I would then want to change my subdomain name to the joshboatmangroup.kw.com just to try to give like some visually, uh, some visual consistency. So without further ado, let's jump into how to change your subdomain. So over here on the right hand side, it's gonna list what your current subdomain is. And a lot of times it will auto generate something based upon your name. If you don't like it, just easily come in here and type in here and change it. Maybe I want to be Josh Boatman. And then just hit claim domain name. If it's available, if another agent doesn't have it, you will um, be able to easily confirm it. And say, hey, you've claimed it. A couple of things to keep in mind. It can only be a max of 30 characters, right? So you can't go a super, super long subdomain. You cannot include any spaces. There can be no special characters. Um, and then just as a reminder, if you change it, so if you had joshuaboatman.kw.com and then later I changed it to the boatmangroup.kw.com, another agent could come in and claim joshuaboatman.kw.com. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Once you claim, you can only have one claimed at a time. And if you give one up, someone else can come back in and, and take it from you. Um, so I just kind of want to point that out. And then the next thing we're going to quickly talk about here is our marketing profile information. So when we expand this little arrow, this should pull from our marketing profile from within command. But what we want to quickly do is we just want to kind of go through here and we just want to confirm that all this information um, is accurate, right? So here you can see I have my little biography. I'm just a guy with a passion for helping people see how technology can improve their lives. I mean, I should put that on my Bumble profile, right? I mean, that's that's not only endearing, but it shows that I have passion. Um, and then you can see my agent license number, which is completely made up as most of yours are probably, who actually looks those things up, right? Um, your compliance and legal footer, this would just be if there's specific information that you need to provide um, that your board requires, that your local, that your state requires um, to be posted on your website. You know, and then of course you can put your market center, you know, some of this is required, some of this is not. Um, but you can verify that your picture is great, that your market center logo, this is that DBA that we downloaded earlier if you don't have it. Um, and then if you have a team uh, logo you want to upload, that can be uploaded there as well. And then confirming any social media links. And of course, this is a link to download your app. And then once you're pretty happy with all of that, if everything looks good, right? And keep in mind what we're seeing here is the home page, right? This is what your home page is going to look like. We can go ahead and save and continue. Now we're on the second step, right? We just did the subdomain step. Now we're on the style and theme. And it's pretty basic here. It's just going to say, hey, do you want the dark theme or do you want the red theme? What does that generally do? It's just going to update some KW logos and links and buttons and labels. So if we do the red theme, for instance, you can just see, you know what, the KWs generally will be red and some other things will show up red, um, or you can have it be the dark theme. I like the dark theme. I think, you know, black and white is more luxury and I'm a luxury agent, you know, I mean, obviously, right? I mean, you would have known that from talking with me for five seconds. Um, and then the next thing we can kind of change is our homepage text. So keep in mind, once again, this is the page we are on. Like when someone goes to our agent site, 
This is what appears right now. Your home search, search starts now. I can change this to whatever I want. Find, turn your dreams into an address. Might be better if I capitalize stuff, but you know what, I'm not in marketing. So we'll just do that. But you can easily see as we change it, you're gonna see what it looks like. And then as we go further down, we're gonna see our hero images. Now these hero images are what is going to randomly rotate behind the screen on your main page. So by default, it comes with a couple of them. And if you want, you can go through and you can change and delete, upload new ones. You can have up to five. They give you some recommendations as far as size wise, right? They recommend at least 1200 by 1200 pixels. Um, and you can upload to five of them. If you don't want five to rotate through, you just always want it to be the same static one, just go through and delete all the ones except the one you want. Um, one, a couple key things to keep in mind with this especially is to um, make sure that you're using images that are reflective of the area that you sell, that you work, right? If you're in Alaska, don't put pictures of palm trees, right? If you're in Texas, don't put pictures of, you know, giant mounds of snow. Well, maybe you will get snow in Texas. I mean, they did get a nice storm. But um, so kind of just make it relative and reflective of what your current business and market is. Um, and then as well as also make sure that whenever we talk about any images on the internet, right, make sure you have permission to use those images. And I'm going to take a quick moment to talk about that. Just don't go to someone's Facebook post and copy and download that image and upload it to your site. Just don't Google image, search something, you find something on a website, save that image and upload it. Um, that is copyright infringement. Unless you have permission to use that photo, you can get dinged. Um, you at least get a nasty gram in an email and potentially a lawsuit. That is something that people actually are pretty um, uh, strong against. So a couple rules of thumb, when you're using a photo, if you find it online, make sure you're purchasing it from a company um, that is selling you a license or that it is absolutely marked as a royalty-free image, right? And that, that it can be used for commercial purposes. Um, or worst case scenario, if you take a picture yourself, then you own the rights to that image. So feel free to uh, upload that image. Just make sure obviously that when you're taking that picture, it's in the public domain, you know, you're like on a public street, you're not looking in someone's houses taking pictures through the window. I mean, that can kind of get you in trouble. At least that's what I hear. Um, so just keep that in mind. Perfect. So then we're going to go ahead and we're going to save and continue down at the bottom. And now it's going to walk us through building out some content for our site. So this guide will actually walk us through building out three quick pages, right? So the first thing I want to talk about is it's going to show us what page we're on, right? So now you can see we are on a sub page. So here's our website, right? And now it's slash about dash us. This is typically what we refer to as a URL slug. It's our sub page, it's our subdirectory, right? It's a page contained within a domain, right? Um, if it kind of makes sense, right? Because it comes from this domain. So a couple of things we'll talk about real quick on the right-hand side, we have this navigation section. This is just kind of showing us the order that the page that we're gonna kind of work our way through. And we can talk about swapping this order um, within our menu as well um, when we actually get into a different section. It's kind of pointless to do it here just because, you know, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, so now let's talk about the search engine optimization section. Well, there's a couple of things first. So page title is not actually what's gonna be reflective here, but this is on the back end, how the internet will identify what's on this page. So by default, they think this should be your company profile. So this could be, if you're running a team, this could be about the team. This could be about your market center. This could be, you know, about Keller Williams, right? Um, this could be, you know, anything you want to kind of plug in and fill in. So we'll leave company profile because say we're going to talk about, um, you know, actually, you know what, let's just say we're going to change this to about the Josh Boatman group, right? And then once again, if you notice, it didn't change here. 
because this is just back end coding. This is just how these search engines are going to be able to identify what's on this page. Now, our URL slug, if we don't want it to be about dash us, we can change that, right? Uh, I'm going to put about dash the team, right? And then SEO description, this would literally be um, what you are to define what is on this page. A quick overview of the value and prop, the value prop that the Josh Boatman group provides. Now, a lot of people will sit there and say, um, you know, well, uh, you know, prop, uh, I guess I should put a proposition. I don't know how to spell that. Did I spell that right? I guess I did. Grammarly, saving my life all the time. Um, you know, you could, a lot of people say you could put in keywords here, right? Like just different keywords that would show up within a search result. Um, search engines are a lot smarter now, right? So I just always recommend just put in a description, if you want, of what is on this page. And that's all we're doing within this search engine optimization section. We're giving the page a title on the back end. We're changing the URL slug if we desire, because now you can see this page is about dash the team, right? And then we give a quick SEO description if we want. We can leave this blank and it doesn't stop us. Absolutely, Marcy. There are some free sites out there. Uh, I haven't heard of Unsplash, but I have heard of uh, Pixabay. So it's like P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. Um, they will also give out some free royalty images. Um, the one thing to keep in mind, though, with that, make sure that it is like a legitimate site because there are some of those sites just to sell advertising. They'll still images from other sites um, and throw them up there and say they're royalty free when, in fact, they really aren't. So just make sure you're going to some reputable sites and you're not going to like Bob's images, you know, um, you know, where Bob's out there just selling his images. Right. Um, just be cautious with that. All right, so we have our search engine optimization, and now we're going to jump into content. So now content, when we're on the content section, this is actually where we are going to control the content within this page. So here, the page header is this right here. So I can say about the Josh Boatman. If I can spell my last name, wouldn't that be nice? My grandpa would be upset. Right, and we're changing this live and we're building this page out. So our header image, this is the default. Once again, if we wanted to change it, we could upload it, browse, and let me just select some random image here. Yeah, let me just say, we're gonna do this. We're gonna set the image. So now it's a terrible image, right? Because I zoomed in on it to make it look good, but just shows you how easy you can come in here and you can switch to a different image. So let's say I wanted to use the one of the region that I'm using for our regional website. Just that simple to update those images, right? And then an intro paragraph, right? It's gonna, as you can see, what we have over here on the right-hand side is over here on the left. Now I'm not gonna go through and I'm not gonna spend the time to fill out this entire profile. Um, just because I want to jump to other sections of the class um, and for brevity purposes, but it's just that simple. What we type over here appears over to the left, right? So this would be our intro paragraph, and this is what the page will in fact look like. So then we have our section one headline. So we have text, a title and text, and then we can update that image. Same with our section two, right? Title and text, and then update the image and then we have a footer headline if there's just some specific text and descriptions we want to provide down there as well. It's pretty simple, right? You just kind of go through, build out the page the way you want, and then once you're done, you're going to hit continue. Now the next thing is going to be about me. So me as the agent, right? So this could be me as the rainmaker, right? Um, you know, this could be anything. Now I want to keep in mind, um, the pages we're building here, you do not have to keep. If you don't want an about me page and you just want a, a page about your team, we can later delete this about me page. But I just want to kind of point it out that, especially if you're a solo agent, for instance, the previous page could be about Keller Williams as a whole and talk about, you know, our mission statement and, you know, the WYT, four Ts, two Cs, three Ss, whatever, whatever that thing is. It's a huge long acronym thing. Um, phenomenal stuff, right? You could talk about that. 
And then here is where you get to talk about yourself, right? You can confirm, and just like we did before, our search engine optimization, if I don't want it to be about me, I want it to be about Joshua Boatman. And I can even change this instead of about dash me, about Josh. You know, I could put, you know, could do like, what about Josh? Everyone seen the movie, what about Bob? Anyone? Classic movie, Richard Dreyfus. you know, anyone? Dude from Groundhog Day, Groundhog Day, I can't remember his name. Who's the guy from Groundhog Day? Oh my gosh, Bill Murray, great movie. What about Bob? What a great movie. Um, and then you can put in a description here as well. And then of course, content is just the same thing. We change about Josh. Whatever we change here will change on the right hand or the left hand side, right? Pretty simple, we click continue. And then last but not least is the contact form. This is where, once again, we just kind of go through, we ad adjust the search engine, the content, whatever we want it to say, this is pretty basic. We can even say, what is our message hint here, right? So if we want to say, this is just a prompt, like, are you looking to buy or sell? What is your time frame? This is for someone to what they to prompt them on what they should type in so they can actually send you a message. And then we'll save and continue. And just that simple, we have built our site. So when we hit the X in the upper right hand corner, we now will see our configured site, joshuaboatman.kw.com. Now that if I click on this, it's going to take us in here. Here we can see my catchy little thing, turn your dreams into an address. If I come over here, I can actually say, hey, let's go to, you know, about the Josh Boatman group. And here you can see the images I put in. Now, obviously, I didn't put any images or headlines here, so it didn't show up. But our site would then be 100% live, ready for people to start to go and look for properties. Pretty cool. So we, we covered just how to quickly get in there. Now let's talk about how can we make some additional changes to our site? Well, once again, we're still in the consumer applet on the left-hand side. We're going to go to site and app settings. And we're going to talk about these tabs across the top. So general is just a quick and easy way for us to change what we just set up um, by going through the Kelly guide without having to go through the Kelly guide. So here you can see where I put in my hero text, right? That, that text that appears right above the search. If I want to change that, I can change it here. Here is a quick and easy way for me to change those background hero images. If I don't want this picture, I can delete it. If I want to upload a new one, I can upload a new picture here. No harm, no foul, right? Um, this is where we could change our app hero text, um, which we're not really going to dig too much into the apps unless we have some time at the end. Um, and then the virtual tours, if you have a virtual tour to set up within your listing, you can advertise that. You know, now I unfortunately can't really walk you through that because I don't have any active listings, um, but it's a pretty uh, simplistic process. And then the last thing I want to point out is this preferences section. It's kind of hidden, so you have to expand it by clicking the arrow. And this is where you can decide if you want to display Keller mortgage uh, information on your uh, app and your site, right? Keller covered our insurance company on your app and your site. By default, they're enabled. But if for some reason you don't want to, uh, maybe you have a specific partnership with a mortgage provider or a insurance provider and you don't want a conflict of interest, you could absolutely disable that from showing up. And of course, if we make any changes, just save changes down at the bottom. URLs, this is just going to basically give us the ability to change our domain name. And then this is also where we can find a link to our app that we want to share um, with our consumer, right, with our clients, right? So if we're ever looking for our app link, we want them to start using our app. We want to text something. We want to copy and paste it into a smart plan. This right here is where we're going to find that app link. Featured listings is a section on your site that you can actually set up to showcase up to 12 different listings for different reasons. So I'm going to jump back to my site. And if I scroll down here, you can see I have three properties here and I've set it up as my recent solds. This can change anything. This could be, you know, luxury properties, right? This could be, you know, as I did recent solds, this could be 
where if you want to showcase a specific neighborhood or a specific development, you can include those listings there. A couple things to keep in mind with this. You can, of course, adjust the order by clicking the six little dots and dragging and dropping. You can delete a property by hitting the trash can and you can select the listings by hitting select listing and then doing a search for that property. Um, actually, we'll do all listings. And it should pull up here. Let's try it. And we can go through and we can start to select additional properties, right? We can select and then done. Things to keep in mind with this as well, though. This is not a dynamic search. This is static. And what I mean by that is what you whatever property you put up here will remain up here. It will not change if it sells. It will not change at all, right? It's always going to be up here as long as it's in the KWLS. So this is something you will have to curate, right? You know, a potential value add with this, uh, you go on a listing presentation, you can always sit there and say, hey, uh, one of the things that I'll do if I get your listing, right, I will make sure that I feature your home on the main page of my website. So all the traffic that I drive to it, blah, 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 they'll see your house front and center, right? Just a little value add. You can just kind of mention during the listing presentation. And then keep in mind, once again, you can only have up to 12 listings. Pretty simple. Theme, this is just what we did before. Red, black, what do you want? Um, and then the agent site pages. This is where we actually determine the menu. So when we build an agent site, Right, and there, we're going to talk about the difference between an agent site and a landing page here in a second. Um, but when you build an agent site, we consider an agent site that is actually going to be coming from your website, and it will appear within this menu. So here you can see I have a couple different sites in here. Right, more about Keller, about Josh Boatman, review me, leave me a review, contact Josh about the Josh Boatman group. Right, I've been making a bunch of different pages for different classes. Right. When I go to site settings and we're on the agent site page, uh, page section, this order that you see here is the same order as this menu here. If I don't want something to appear within this, so say I don't want this review me, I can click on it. Um, I can change the actual name and the title and the slug of the page as well. Um, I can adjust you know, where I want it to appear in the list. I mean, if I want to delete it, I click the three little dots to the right or the ellipses or the ellipsis or something. I don't know what they call it. I call it the three dots. I'm old school. I call it what it is. I see it what it is, you know, spades a spade. And we can just delete it and it's going to delete it from the menu. I want to be clear. This does not delete the page from command. It just removes it from this menu. So if we refresh this screen, now that we've made a change, now it's gone. So I just want to kind of keep that in mind. This is how you build out and determine what appears within the menu. So you tell someone to go to your website. Oh, yeah, go to your website, go to the menu in the upper right hand corner and click the leave me a review to leave me a testimonial. Right. Just kind of want to point that out. If you build an agent site page and you go to add page, this is going to list all your different pages. And then you can click on one, click continue. And then it should get added to the bottom of the page. So we'll see what it does. There we go. And then when I click on it, come on now, it's thinking about it. Oh, then I can change the name of it. I can change the description of it. Um, I can do whatever I need to do for it to appear within the menu. So this is site map setting, just some quick things we can go through to quickly tweak your site without having to go through the Kelly guide. So now the next thing we're going to talk about are agent site pages and landing pages. So agent site pages are pages that we want to create that generally we want to include within our menu, right? Um, landing pages are kind of one-off pages that really aren't based and built from our site. You can actually see that they don't actually come from Josh Boatman kw.com but instead they come from pages.kw.com slash joshua dash boatman you know my kate keller williams quid and then whatever i've named the url landing pages are temporary pages landing pages typically are pages that you're using for isolated purposes and there's a couple we're going to walk through um 
to show you why you would use a landing page. Um, but quickly, let's jump into the agent site pages. All right. So to create a new page, we're going to come up here in the right-hand corner. We're going to create a new page. It's going to say, hey, is this an agent site page or is this a landing page? Well, for us, we're going to do an agent site page and we're going to click create page. So this is going to take us to a blank page. And there's a couple things I want to point out here. First, in the upper left-hand corner, this is how we identify what the page is. So let's say I wanted to build a page that I wanted to send people to to leave reviews about me. I could title this my testimonial, or you know what? Leave me a review. Right, so I can identify what this page is. Pretty simple. On the right hand side are all the different widgets and content blocks that we can use to build this page. So we're going to quickly talk about a few of these. So the first one we're going to um, talk about is the team, right? And to add a widget over, we're just going to drag it over. And if you've been in my designs class yesterday um, or the day before, I think it was the day before. You're, uh, one of the things to always keep in mind when we see the green line when we're moving over a content block or a widget, our widget or content block will appear below the green line. So if I drop in team, for instance, this is where I could build a specific meet my team page, right? If I wanted to build a page on my teams on my Keller Williams site, which could never be my team site, and I wanted to include the people on my team, this widget allows me to do that. A couple caveats with this though. This widget can only allow you to include team members that are actually tied to you in command. So said another way, if you have a transaction coordinator and they do not have a command account and they're not officially on your team, then they're not gonna be available for you to actually add them in this section, right? Um, and to give you an, an example of what I'm talking about, once we add a widget, if you notice in the lower right hand corner here, we have a configure widgets option. So we add the widget and then we need to configure it. And if we click that, it's gonna say, hey, we must configure some widgets here. You have a team widget. So let's click on this. Here I can change, you know, meet the team to meet the Joshua Boatman group. I'm gonna change my team name. Um, the intro text, Intro text right here, right? This is the default verbish, whatever you want to put in here. Meet my amazing team. And then down below here, it's going to say select your team, right? I'm the Josh Boatman group. And then you can see I only have three people on my team. I have myself as the rainmaker and I have an, a buyer's agent and I have a team admin. I can edit this order if I want, but I, as the rainmaker, of course, should always be above everyone. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then I can even change the roles here, right? I don't know if I want to be called the team leader. Maybe I just want to be called the rain maker. You know, maybe this is my buyer specialist. And my admin is, you know, the heart, you know. Uh, and then maybe my admin is, we'll just leave team admin. We can hit save. So now I don't, they don't have photos uploaded, but now you can kind of see what this widget looks like, right? Has our contact info, if they have their contact info and command, simple enough, right? So now let's say, uh, let's talk about a couple other widgets. We have our agent profile. So if we drag this over, right, we can go above or below. So let's go above. And this is just a, a widget for me, right? This is just my contact info, same as on the about me page where I was able to build this out and list this out and say, hey, you know, if I wanna make any changes, I can configure this widget, upload a new photo, change my role, right? You know, about me, update my phone number and everything. All this pulled over from my profile, but I can change that if I want. Uh, the next widget we'll quickly talk about is our contact form, right? So if we drop this below it, for instance, now it's just a contact us, right? Where they can fill in some information. Um, once again, we can customize this to suit our needs, right? 
Um, if we want to change what the, the hint text is, we can do that as well. Um, and all that good stuff. So let's go through and let's just say that we want to talk about we're building a testimonial page, right? Um, so actually, let me do this. Let me go back so I don't have to delete everything. And let me just start a new one. I had a bunch of widgets and so it's just such a pain for me to go through and delete them all. So, all right, so we're gonna do a testimonial page, right? How can we do that? Well, if we jump over here to our content blocks, one of the content blocks we can bring over is text, right? And I can say, you know, um, welcome to the Thunderdome. No, um, to my, uh, actually, you know what, let's just say, please leave me a review, right? I, of course, can adjust the font. I can make it bold. I can do all of that. Um, but actually, before we move on, the one thing I forgot to mention, and I always try to, is in this upper left-hand corner. We have these three little icons, and this allows us to format our screen so we can kind of see what our website's going to look like on a computer, a desktop, right, on a tablet, or on a mobile device. My rule of thumb generally is when we build websites, when we do anything generally that's going to be showcased on a mobile device, we want to build it on a mobile, the mobile view, right? I'm, I'm less worried about what it looks like on the desktop because most people aren't on their desktop when they're going to websites, right? Everyone's on a tablet or a phone, mostly on the phone. Um, our image block is pretty cool, so we can drag that over and we can um, upload an image, right? And I don't have a, a good testimonial image, um, but and we'll actually talk about uploading images later but I just want to kind of just say you can include an image. And anytime we put a block up here, if we want to delete it, if we highlight it, we should just be able to hit the trash can. So when we talk about the widgets, you know, it's pretty simple. Um, we can put in our testimonial capture form. And this is something we can go through and we can configure. If we go and we configure the widget, um, we'll go to the next widget here. And this will just let us adjust all the text description. And what's really cool about this, you can build a page to, to show, to capture your testimonials, right? And then you can build a page, another page that you can actually showcase your testimonials, right? And that's what the testimonial list or the testimonial carousel. Now, what's cool about this, if someone leaves you a review, it doesn't automatically go to your website, right? You actually have to configure that widget, come to your testimonial list, pick and choose what details of the client you want to appear, um, and then you actually select the testimonial. So for instance, I only have one testimonial on my list, so I can leave that checked, uh, but if I unchecked it, then if they went to my review page, they would not see anything. So if someone leaves you a negative review on your page for some reason, you do not have to showcase it. Um, so to give you an idea of what this looks like, do I think, you know what, I don't know if I, so here's my leave me a review. Um, let me know how I'm doing. And someone can come in here and they can say, a oh, first name is Andre um, Johnson, his email address, uh, Andre dot, Andre dot Johnson to at, at kw.com. Hopefully there isn't one and he was a client since 1998. He's gonna give me five stars and said, Josh was awesome. Actually we'll do Andre Johnson 21. So that way we know there's none of those out there. All right, would you recommend me? Sure, we can preview it. So it looks like they can submit. Oop, I don't know what went wrong there. Do I fill everything out right? Let's try this one more time. There we go. All right. So now if I delete this widget and I close this out, right? And I want to see what the carousel looks like. I can drag that over. I can configure the widget in the lower right hand corner. Now you can see I have something from Andre. So if I don't want Andre on there, I can uncheck. If I just want Marshall, I can just leave Marshall checked. I can just select Andre. 
so you can manage that. So I think that's very important. Create that page for people to leave you reviews, but then also create that page to display your reviews and then pick and choose what you want to show. I'm going to save that. Um, let's see, was there anything else on the agent site? Let me double check. Um, company profile, basically, this is just an about page that we just created, uh, what we created, you know, when we were going through um, the Kelly guide, right? We could create a new company profile page. So that's all that is. Um, so it's pretty basic, the widgets we can create and we can utilize when we're doing the site page. So now let's talk about landing pages. So if we create a new landing page, once again, these are generally set up for one-time use pages that you're using for a specific reason. They're not always going to be out there. They're not meant to be static for the life of something. Um, here, their recommendation is, you know what, you're using a landing page for lead generation. So when we click create page, once again, we can name it in the upper left-hand corner. We can adjust the view, build it for mobile. Now you'll see we have a couple different uh, widgets. And this is where we kind of want to get into the nitty gritty of things. We have our branded header, which is going to plug in our info up here. If we go bigger, you know, it has our picture on a mobile device for because of screen real estate, it doesn't showcase our picture, right? Tablets kind of in between. Um, we have our legal footer, which we can include at the bottom of our page. We also could do a testimonial capture form with this if we wanted. Um, we could do our agent branding, which is just that, right? It's our little box there of just our information, but we don't want to do that quite yet. So what's a good example of what we could do? Well, you could build a specific landing page for a listing, right? Instead of, say you're doing your Facebook campaign, and instead of just sending them to the standard search on your agent website that we I kind of showed in previous classes, say you want a dedicated page to this listing. Well, that's what the landing page allows us to do. So I'm gonna start with a branded header. I'm gonna grab the listing block and I'm just gonna drag it over and remember anything below the green line is where it drops. And then I'm gonna scroll down and this is kind of gives you a preview of what it's gonna look like. And then I'm also gonna drop in a lead form below it. So if you can kind of see, I moved it all the way down and it's hard to see the green uh, line below, but it's down there. And then I can scroll down in here is a lead capture form, right? And then maybe, maybe I wanna, I wanna drop in my agent branding below it. Then I'm gonna drop in my legal footer below that, right? So now we've kind of quickly built out a page. And then if I click configure widgets, it's gonna walk me through configuring each widget if I need to. So I need to select a listing. In this case, I'm gonna you know, go to my classic one that I'm always using. So it'll pull up in my list, there it is. North Orbison Road, right? So I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna select this. Here, it's gonna allow me to pick any one of the photos from the listing. I can upload a custom image if I choose to do so. And I can save and apply. Now you'll notice since I added a bunch of widgets here, it's actually walking us through in the upper right hand corner. So this was the first one. There's nothing we needed to do, right? If we click back, you know, we don't need to change anything here unless we want to. Then we're on the listing, right? Then we work our way through. Here's our lead form. Want to live here? DMV, right? And we can save and apply that. And now this section here, like our branded header, is there any, is there our, our agent branding, is there anything here we want to change? And then of course this bottom section here, do we want to update any logos, any of that good stuff? And then of course I want to identify this. So I'm going to go 4995 North or Benson, what a weird name. If I want to see what it looks like mobile, I go super mobile. You know, but what's really cool about this, right? You can kind of see there's a huge difference between what this page looks like than just a standard search page, right? This is a landing page specifically for this listing. Details and features, right? 
And then if I can save it as a draft, and if, but if I'm ready to publish this bad boy, I'm gonna go ahead and click publish. Are we gonna make it visible? Absolutely. So now we go to landing pages. Here you can see my 4995 North Orbitson. If I click on this link, this is what someone will see publicly. This is what a consumer, someone looking at the house We'll see, they'll be able to go through and they'll see all the photos. They'll see an address, right? And we can zoom in and they can say, hey, what's going on? Where's it at? What's around it? They can send me a message directly and as well as have some additional branding of mine down at the bottom. This is phenomenal because if you're doing a Facebook campaign for a specific house, right? And you spend the time, you can build a landing page for that house and then instead, and then drive traffic lead generation, the leads that are, you know, when they click on that ad can come to this location. Another, you know, value add, you know, when we talk about a listing presentation, small things, right? It's always small things in, in the end that get you a listing, right? That help differentiate yourself. Hey, I'm gonna build a dedicated page. There's gonna be a dedicated listing page that we're gonna drive all this traffic to um, when we run Facebook campaigns on your property. And you know what? Have one of your properties up and running. Have one of these built. You know, whip it out on your phone and show them like, hey, your house is going to, this is the, like a dedicated listing page that I'm going to have built specifically for your property, right? I always find it weird when people shove a bed in the corner. That just seems like so weird. It's like, I think nothing says a room is so small, like putting a bed in a corner, right? Like that is how you can say like they're trying to say hey it's 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 small but but look you can just put a bed in a corner um insane uh but just kind of a very very cool thing right any leads that get filled out from this will get triggered within command and you'll receive a notification right pretty cool and at any given point um there's a couple things we can do so from this landing page section if we want to turn the page off once orbinson sells we flip the switch and we can turn it off. Um, you'll notice our URL here. Notice how it has a bunch of gobbledygook on the end here because it's randomly generated. If we want to fix that, if we want this last part to look a little bit more appealing, we can come over to the three little dots. We can change the URL and we can change the portion after our Keller Williams ID, our quid, our 741298, right? Here we could put in 4995 North Corbin, Troy, Ohio, right? You can only use numbers, letters, and dashes, can't put spaces or, or question marks or anything in there. Hit create. And now it's changed a little bit. It's a little bit prettier, right? It's not all that random nonsense. If we want to delete it, it's just simple. We can delete it, right? If you want to edit it, we can come in here and we can edit that page. It takes us back to that same screen where we can go through and we can edit it. So pretty awesome, right? Well, what else could you use a landing page for? Well, you may use a landing page for events. So to give you an idea, here's one I was working on um, before the class today to kind of show you. Let's jump in here, let's edit this bad boy. And I wanted to create a page for the shred day that my office is gonna be doing, right? So I created a graphic. Easily I went and I found a, a royalty-free image of shredded paper, right? I loaded it in designs and I added some text to it. It's not fancy, but you know, it's me. And I created some verbiage with some text boxes that I added from my content block, plugged in some info, hope to see you there put in my name, and then I also put a contact form there in the end. So what's the value of this, right? I did this shred day, what's, what's, what's the point? Well, think of it like this. You use Facebook campaigns to advertise listings. Well, now you could create a Facebook campaign to advertise your shred day and target either your, um, your database, if you have 100 or more people that you wanna build within that audience, or just target the world at large, right? If you're in Troy, Ohio, if you're in Dayton, Ohio, if you're in Austin, Texas, run a Facebook campaign that says, hey, free shred day, come here, ask for Josh, right? And this is the page 
that it can default to and link to. So when they click on it, it's taking them to your website where they can then look and find out more information about what you're doing. This could be for a pumpkin giveaway if you do things like that. This could be for a first time buyer seminar, right? You could create a page for an open house, right? If you're running an open house um, and you advertise that open house and you have a page that people can go to and they can fill out information if they're attending the open house or if they've attended the open house, right? Send them that link. You know, um, a couple other interesting things you can do with these landing pages. Let's create a new one. Is, of course, I always start with the branded header. Always start with the branded header. Um, we have a market snapshot section where now you could build a specific landing page for a specific neighborhood, right? Of course, I would always then drop in a, a lead form you know, probably some agent branding down here at the bottom and then drop in our legal footer, right? Then when we go and we configure the widget, it's going to walk us through. Let's go to the market snap. Welcome to Westbrook. It's a neighborhood where I live. Plug in the zip code. It's going to bring up all the neighborhoods within that zip code and Westbrook's in this list. And I can save and apply. So now, in theory, I can build a Facebook campaign that just advertise home, that advertises homes within Westbrook that are for sale if you want to live in Westbrook and then drive them to this page, right? We can see what it looks like on mobile. You know, very, very cool. We have this market snapshot. You can build a market snapshot for any of the number of great neighborhoods within your area, right? If you wanna get real fancy with it, you can use these content blocks, drag in some text, drag in some images, right? Maybe you have some pictures in and around the neighborhoods. Maybe you have a picture of the park within the neighborhood or any of the weird amenities that might be cool for people that wanna live in and around this area. And you can start to build this out, right? And you have a neighborhood page. Let's jump back in and let's create a different one. I just always like to create new ones because I hate to have to go through and delete things. Um, you know, we can do a local expert. So let's talk about that, right? We drag this in. This is just you about you adding um, a section where, hey, download my app, right? You could include this on your market snap, right? I'm the local expert, right? There's a video widget, which is kind of nice. So basically, this is just a way that if you wanted to, you could get away, you know, one of the things we get requests on, hey, can we do something like a bomb bomb in command, right? Well, you, you really can't, but what we can do is if you shoot a video of yourself, you can create a landing page for that video. We can upload that video or um, link it to where you've uploaded it on YouTube, right? Whatever makes the most sense to you. You could put in a description, and say, um, excited to meet, excited to see you at Shred Day, right? We could have included this on our Shred Day image, right? Um, we could upload a video if we wanted, just link a URL, um, upload the video just as simple as coming through, locating the video on your computer and uploading it, and then save and apply. So I got to plug in the URL here, so let me just do this. So let me save it. Uh, oh, you know what? It's got to be YouTube, I bet. I'm just going to save and apply. So now what will happen is, now it's going to look a little weird because I actually didn't link it to a page. Um, but you would then, they would see the embedded YouTube video, the embedded Vimeo, and then you could link them to this page via a text message from command via um, a designed email from command using the video app, uh, the video content block within an uh, email designs, right? And you can start driving all that traffic back to your page. Just some really kind of cool things that you can kind of do to leverage your agent website within command. And as always, if we're done, 
Just turn it off, turn it, it's inactive now. Doesn't delete it, but it prevents people from going to it because now if someone tries to go to that page, they're gonna get, whoa, it's not available anymore. Pretty simple, pretty basic, um, but pretty cool where you can just easily come in here and within a couple clicks of a button, as long as you have a design idea of what you wanna fill in verbiage and picture wise, you can build these pages in a matter of minutes and they can be up and running um, and you're leveraging that. So we got about four minutes left. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna open it up. Any questions, concerns, criticisms, compliments? Anything at all while you still have me? I am recording this session. So, and by the end of this week, I should hopefully have all these uploaded to our regional YouTube. And then we'll get those links out for everyone to go through and um, watch again, if that's something you choose to do. Just as a heads up for anyone, um, uh, tomorrow will be the last regional class that we teach with this current Zoom link. Um, starting next week, there will be a new Zoom um, link that we're sending out because um, we're going to start having some other trainers come in and teach these classes. Notification from leads, where do they go? Great question, Marcy. Um, so when you get notified, when someone fills out something on your um, agent website, you will get an email notification. You will get a bell notification um, in the upper right-hand corner within command. And then if you have the Kelly app installed and, and logged in, you'll get notified via the Kelly app as well. You know, um, it will create a contact directly within your command, um, within your contacts, right? Within your contacts applet, whatever information they provided, it will appear as a contact within that contact applet. Most importantly, it'll be categorized as a lead. So you'll be able to filter by the lead. Um, one of the things uh, you will be able to do as well within the landing page section, you'll actually see if any leads were generated um, and you'll actually be able to um, see like that number of leads. You won't actually be able to drill into the leads from the landing page, but you'll know that it generated some leads and then you can easily find them within command, within the contacts applet is what I should say. Do you have to turn on the email? I didn't see it. Um, double check to make sure that it didn't get filtered by your spam. Um, but when you fill it out and you're on a landing page, you absolutely should be getting um, an email notification. If for some reason you're not, um, shoot me an email with what page you're trying to generate and I can take a, um, what page you published that you're trying to generate a lead from. And um, I will take a look at it and we can investigate it further. Uh, my email is uh, Boatman, J B O A T M A N, the letter J, at kw.com, and I'll throw it into the chat as well. No worries. All right, ladies and germs, um, we got a minute left. And unless there's any further questions, I'll let you guys out of here a minute early. That's amazing. Look, I'm saving you time already. See, if you sell a house today, I should get like 5%. Um, beyond that, hope you all have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. And if you're going to attend tomorrow, it'll be exciting. We're going to talk about reports and goal setting within command. So looking forward to seeing you guys then. Deuces.